Hello, I'm Ignat Solovey and this is Flight TV, the only Russian television production about general aviation. I'm the cameraman and your host here. This production is supported by Aero Volga Scientific Production Cooperative. As some of you may have noticed, I'm active at various forums. That way, we gather subjects and questions so that to make our production more interesting for you, our dear viewers. Some of you expressed interest about pilot social life here in Russia and about new aircraft. So, we're fulfilling that interest. First about pilots meetup and next about new and very, very interesting flying boat from Samara designed by Boris Chernov. But first, to the news. Oops, helicopters again. Russian Air Force helicopter show team Berkuti or Golden Eagles celebrates its 25th anniversary this summer. That was marked with public air show with free and almost unrestricted access to the military air base at Trozhok, not far from Tver. Russian military pilots showed their best skills and not only on helicopters. The famous jet show teams Russian Knights and the Swifts congratulated their colleagues in style. Some elements were unbelievable even for experienced part of the crowd, like formation change in vertical loop by the Swifts on MiG-29. You can see the best elements on our YouTube and Instagram channels. Russian State Weather Service excluded almost all METARs from international data exchange and hid them behind paid subscription even for Russians. Starting this July, you can view data only for 19 Russian airports at no charge. That may sound strange for you in Europe and Americas, where the majority of weather data is available for free. The pill was sweetened by an access to the new precipitation map with 19 minutes advance. It also covers parts of Baltic states and Finland. This will last as long as testing goes and probably will become paid in several months. There are other options though. Popular web services improve and you can see all you need at Gizmeteo and Yandex Weather. Nicely presented. Open Skies 2017. Traditional summer meetup near Ufa in Bashkiria. How do we do it in Russia? Open Skies 2017 was the 12th annual meetup at Pervushina Airfield. Financial troubles and so called football ban that was in effect in June and part of July reduced the number of participants. Anyway, 47 various aircraft from 30 regions, not quite bad for Russia. Some developers presented their machines for the first time in public. That was Erlan, a car engine driven helicopter from Perm, and Sigma 6, a plane with automatically foldable wings. That was good enough for almost 10,000 strong crowd of spectators. We are a specialized program though, and are interested not only in flight demos, but in developments and services offered for pilots in exhibition hangars. It's not much of a problem to insure anything in the West. Not so easy in Russia, but something started even here. Small insurance company from Moscow decided to offer Casco packages for private pilots and with the benefit of avoiding officials if insured occurrence happened. You don't need official investigators report here, just a statement from capable airfield staff. Also, they insure not only small planes and helicopters, but power motors and flex wings as well. These inexpensive ultralights are quite popular in Russia. The cost is defined by experts and by parties agreement. We expect the annual fee to be 2% of the aircraft market cost, or a little more. New propellers from Samara. The Aviaspector company produces flex wings, strikes and delta flyers since the early 90s, and also propellers. Here they presented variable pitch props for Rotex engines. We designed and produced three-bladed variable pitch propeller for Rotox 912 and 914 engines. Now to the aircraft. There were two new machines presented at Pervushina for the first time. The first one is Orlan, 
light two-seater helicopter from Perm with Ukrainian roots. This machine uses the engine from Subaru Legacy that runs on A95 or Super Unleaded Car Petrol for 2000 hours between overhauls. Fuel tank capacity is 150 liters or 40 US gallons. Cruising speed is about 90 knots and it can take you as far as 850 kilometers or 530 static miles fully loaded. Empty weight is just 400 kilograms. Maximum takeoff weight is 780 kilos. Practical ceiling is 3 kilometers or 9000 feet above mean sea level. Dynamic ceiling is 4800 meters or 15700 feet. This thing seems to rival popular Mosquito, Safari and R22 helicopters with lucrative price, just 150,000 euros. Consider low service expenses too. New airplane with uncommon feature of wings folded by electric motor is Sigma 6 by Sergei Ignatyev from Moscow. If Orlan helicopter arrived on its own and by air, this plane had to be towed by car for a thousand miles. The reason was the ban on general aviation imposed around Moscow, St. Petersburg, Kazan and Sochi for the UEFA Confederations Cup 2017. Mr. Ignatiev decided to obey the law, as his contraption easily fits quite compact trailer, but was furious about security regulations. They set some annoying and outrageous ban. We're shocked. It cannot be explained by any stretch of common sense. Vladimir Putin once said that he is ready to waste terrorists in outhouses. Instead, we see his government being afraid of its own people. Those who fly and value freedom are the pride of the nation, in my opinion. The best people here and the most advanced ones. The plane itself is a nice thing for casual and training flight as well as vacation transport. Maximum takeoff weight is 600 kilos, useful load is 250 kilos. Cruising speed is between 105 and 135 knots. Engine options are Rotex 912S or 912 IS. Flying distance is up to 750 km. And of course, you can store it inside your car garage, for the wings can be folded or unfolded in half a minute with a press of a button. One more interesting thing at the field was a home built by Yuri Yermakov, retired civil aviation pilot from Izhevsk. Made of polycarbonate with Rotox 582 engine, it's very cheap and easy to build. One seater for small pleasure flights at 6000 euro price point. No license required, at least in Russia, as it is under 115 kilos category. 40 meters, 6 seconds to take off and you're airborne. Very nice thing. I just come to a field, uncover it, start and get in the air. When I vented myself enough, I just set it back like a bicycle. I don't do any upgrades, it's in good condition and needs little attention. This year it was Georgi Kirtaev from Surgut in western Siberia, whose road to the show was the longest. He got to Bashkiria on slow, just super STOL. Planes of that kind are highly popular in Alaska and are very useful in Siberia as well. Georgi's flight was as slow as 38 knots sometimes, because of strong headwinds, but he is used to that. For many years he covered tens of thousand kilometers, being busy with biological research and monitoring. We work mostly with aquatic birds, they are slow load. We need such plane to work at low altitudes and slow speeds, as it is very easy to fly low, slow and safely. There were 47 participants, each has his own story good for a short film, and it is impossible to fit everyone into one program. Sergei Minigulov, the meetup organizer, worth a separate movie himself as he makes that regardless of all obstacles. Shortly before the event, his airfield became a subject of a criminal case. The law enforcement took paid recreational flights for unlicensed commercial air service, as it becomes customary in Russia, and decided to give an exemplary punishment once more. The rumors are that the prosecutors were tipped by owners of another airfield. It's quite rotten trend goes on here, as a consequence of some kind of rivalry. I won't elaborate on the subject though, I just want to tell everyone that we are too few here to divide the sky in such an early manner, so good luck and safe flight to everyone.
In other years, the quest was very coincidental. At Pipron Forum, I was asked to tell more about Boris Chernov, an aircraft designer from Samara, and his flying boats. The odds could not be better, since this July we spent almost a week at Aero Volga factory, where the new beret was rolled out. It's not just another experimental, it's the start of serial production. So, see our next feature for extensive details. Borei, a two-seater flying boat, is the 10th airborne project of Boris Chernov. This man went all the classic way of self-taught genius back in Soviet times. As a young man, he enrolled into Samara Aerospace University, but left after two years and founded what now can be called a boat building startup. That were just boats, not flying, because you could not build private airplanes in the USSR. He made boats for almost 20 years. After the USSR collapsed, he finally could pursue his childhood dream and started to build amphibian airplanes. In the recent two decades, more than a hundred airplanes of nine types designed by Boris Chernov were built as chess series, although all of them are registered as experimental singles. They fly all around Russia, from warm Black Sea coast where snow is rarely seen, to transpolar regions where minus 30 centigrade is pretty normal. During the first test flight, Bore's takeoff run was about 100 meters and landing was even shorter, less than 60 meters. More than fine for an amphibian, but keep pilot's experience in mind. It's not good to boss, but you need experience, and I have one. Calm weather makes landing even worse, with the wind the run would be even shorter. The plane was on its very first flight, keep that in mind too. After some practice you can cut those distances twofold. The plane is 7 meters long and 2.5 meters high from landing gear to engine compartment. Wingspan is a bit less than 10 meters. Bore is built at Aero Volga, the largest private aircraft factory in Samara. Aero Volga produces bigger LA-8 flying boat for more than 10 years and now it enters the market of two-seaters. The new airplane is designed to fully conform the US F-2245 and Canadian Advanced Ultralight guidelines. We use certified engine, it's Rotox 912, but S version and not ULS. All avionics are by Garmin, partially certified. The rest is manual. The plane is very simple, as it has no electric systems. Flapperons are manual, landing gear is manual, it's only elevator trim tab that is electric, but you understand that it's not the most critical part here. Anyway, we can't remember elevator trim tabs failures. Bore's empty weight is 380 kilograms, including the complete set of equipment. Even less, considering that all systems have double power supply backup and triple avionics backup. Also, there is terrain awareness and warning system installed. Manufacturer claims maximum takeoff weight of 650 kilograms and 120 meters of takeoff and landing run. In reality, the runs are even shorter for experienced pilots, as you have already seen. Any other flying boat with such parameters? Don't think so. We have the strictest weight discipline here. What you can afford with heavier airplane, you cannot afford here. That's why each and every system was analyzed for weight and a lot of design solutions were reviewed as a result. Weight decrease didn't impair Bure's qualities. Customers can choose either 50 liter fuel tank for 3 hours of flight or two tanks for 90 liters in total and up to six hours in the air. By the way, stall speed is just 60 km per hour or 32 and a half knots. One more bonus is the IFR capability. The plane is fully IFR compliant. It has autonomous air pressure systems for different instruments, autonomous power supply. We obeyed all rules of backup like a holy teaching. Now some interesting combination for amphibian planes pilots. 270 kilos of useful load, 100 knots cruising speed in Rotox 912S continuous mode and instrumental flight. At that, the machine is reliable and easy to fly. Modular design allows development according to customer's demand, adding different options, including higher payloads. According to the manufacturer, 
It resembles old Soviet Lada 4x4 Niva car. Cheap, durable and suitable for very harsh conditions, but much more reliable than Lada, of course. It does we made, so to say, a flying Niva. Lightweight and functional crossover, acceptable cruising and excellent takeoff and landing parameters and very good hydrodynamics. Boray's cargo compartment can be modded to carry Hunter dogs. As well, Rotox 914 engine can be installed for higher payloads. Standard propeller can be swapped for a variable pitch and you'll get 108 knots cruising speed. Or all that together as Aero Volga is open for any customer demands. Contract, payment and all legal interactions are made via Swiss company. There is a warranty of 100 flight hours or 2 calendar years. Aero Volga already has 6 prepaid orders on Boree and only one of them is Russian. What's interesting, all five foreign orders are made by flight schools. Bore was designed specifically for flight schools and first machines go there. We already taught some French crews, Germans came two times and everyone are very happy with the plane. There is no equivalent for a certain Russian word in the Western languages, but they acknowledge that the plane is very hard to crush. After a five-minute evening test flight, the very next morning, Bore took off for a 4,000-kilometer-long expedition to Pechora, far in Russian north, with French pilot Loic Blais on board and French filming crew in accompanying LA-8. We, of course, asked if it wasn't too risky. The answer was very firm. Such question is ridiculous for the serial plane where everything is strictly accounted for and each smallest piece has its own responsible employee that signs all logs. Bore is already safely back from the journey, so quite soon we'll visit Air Volga again and continue its story. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them in comments or by email you see on your screen. We'll try to get answers for all of them. This issue 14 of Flight TV in English is over. I'm Ignat Silove, the cameraman and your host here. We need your feedback. So, please voice your opinion on forums, uh, in comments, and, of course, subscribe. You know where the button is. As well as your feedback. We need your support, because that sponsorship we have doesn't cover even our basic costs. So, we have a page on Patreon. You see the link on your screen. Thanks for watching, fly safely, and see you later!